All right, so in this problem, I have five to the power of x plus five to the power of x plus five to the power of x plus five to the power of x is equal to 1,000. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by factoring out 5 to the power of x from my left-hand side. Because as you can see, we have four of the same terms on my left-hand side. And the easiest way to go about the, solving this equation is to factor them out. So I get 5 to the power of x times, well, 5 to the power of x divided by 5 to the power of x is simply 1. So I get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1,000. And now 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. So I get 5 to the power of x times 4 is equal to 1,000. Now, we want to isolate x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So then these two cancel out. And I get 5 to the power of x is equal to 1,000 divided by 4, which is 250. So from this large equation here, we got up to an equation that is significantly smaller. So we have 5 to the power of x equal 250. And just at first glance of this equation, we can tell that x is not going to be a whole number because we have 5 squared is 25, 5 to the power of 3 is 125, and 5 to the power of 4, this is going to be 125 times 5, which is 625. So the value of x is somewhere in between 3 and 4. Now to actually find the exact value of x, not just an estimate, what we're going to do is rewrite 250 as 25 times 10. And the reason I did this is because 25 is the same thing as 5 squared. So I get 5 squared times 10. And now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I get log of 5 to the power of x is equal to log of 5 squared times 10. And this is the same thing as, well, log a times b is equal to log of a plus log b. So log 5 squared times 10 is going to equal log of 5 squared plus log of 10. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this can equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 5 to the power of x. I can move x to the front. And I have log 5 to the power of 2. So I can move 2 to the front. And I get x times log of 5 is equal to 2 times log of 5 plus log 10. Now I'm going to divide both sides by log 5. So then these two cancel out. And I get x is equal to 2 times log 5 plus log 10 over log 5. Now, if you guys already know, log 10 is equal to 1. So now I get x is equal to 2 times log 5 plus 1 over log 5. And this is the same thing as 2 times log 5 over log 5 plus 1 over log 5. So now these two log 5's cancel out. So I get x is equal to 2 plus 1 over log 5. And although this is a, an exceptional answer, 
I'm, I want the exact answer, so I'm going to find the value of log 5. And log 5 is equal to zero point six nine nine meaning one divided by log of five is going to equal one point four three so two plus one point four three is three point one four three so I get three x is equal to three point one four three and this is my answer to this problem. And remember how we already said that x was going to be somewhere in between 3 and 4. So this proves us right. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of 12 minus 1 is equal to 0. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite this as x to the power of 6 to the power of 2 minus one squared is equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into x to the power of six plus one times x to the power of six minus one is equal to zero. So this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of six plus one equals zero and x to the power of six minus one equals zero. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm going to rewrite x to the power of 6 minus 1 equals 0 as x to the power of 3 to the power of 2 minus 1 squared is equal to 0. <clears throat> so I can use this property again and get x to the power of 3 plus 1 times x to the power of 3 minus 1 is equal to 0. Now for x to the power of 3 minus 1 equals 0, I can, I'm going to rewrite this as x to the power of 3 minus 1 to the power of 3 equals 0. So I can use the property a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3 is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So this turns into a minus b times a squared plus a plus 1 is equal to 0. Sorry, this turns into x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0, which gives me yet another two equations. So now I have x minus 1 equals 0, and x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. So for x minus 1 equals 0, all I have to do is add 1 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 1. And for x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0, I can use the quadratic formula. So by using it, I get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3i over 2. So these are two more solutions. And now we aren't done yet because we also have to solve these. So now I have x to the power of 3 plus 1 is equal to 0. And I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x to the power of 3 is equal to negative 1, meaning x is also equal to negative 1. So this is another solution. Now for x to the power of 6 plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to again subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x to the power of 6 is equal to negative 1. And if I take the 6th root, I get x is equal to 6 root of negative 1, which is equal to negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6. So now, the sixth root of negative one is say the, we know that i is equal to the square root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one half. So, negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6 is the same thing as negative 1 to the power of 1 half minus something. 
So now 1 over 6, or I should say 1 half minus 1 over 6, is equal to 1 over 3. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 is equal to 1 half. We know this, meaning we have negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6. And this plus, or sorry, I should, 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 is what we can rewrite 1 over 6 as. Now, this is the same thing as 1 half plus negative 1 over 3. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal negative 1 to the power of 1 half times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 to the power of 1 half is the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. So we get i times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3, which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 to the power of 1 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So I get i times negative 1, which is equal to negative i which is my final solution.